what's up y'all it's your girl sakina and i'm back with another review this is my review for the real housewives of potomac and clearly i'm in bed and that's just because i feel like being in bed okay i had a long weekend i just want to relax and quite frankly i'm just over the real housewives of potomac so i don't feel like sitting up in front of my ring light and giving y'all a show to be honest i just don't and i have you know i'm trying to plan trips in the background and all of that i got stuff to do and i'm, I'm working my nine to five anywho the episode opens up with ashley going down to mia's house and Mia talks to Ashley about the conversation that her and Gordon had about Michael and Ashley's divorce and how if they were in their situation that Mia and Gordon will come up with a beneficial arrangement and Mia's like so what's going on with y'all she says she does plan on divorcing but it's more so of an attachment situation um because in her childhood she was evicted twice because her mom was a single parent doing it all by herself yes they had support with her family or from her family but just as as a single parent it was hard for sheila to really hold it down so she can't imagine being in that position with her children well ashley this is where you should have thought smarter okay because you're depending on this man to pay for this a million dollar house that ain't even worth a meal if you ask me you could have went somewhere else where you would have gotten more bang for your buck you could have easily crossed over crossed over the bridge into maryland and got you a, a, a more affordable home somewhere but instead you chose to stay in virginia and be in this expensive house that you cannot afford on your own and let me ask you something, Ashley. Seriously, do you feel like GNA is going to support your your way of living? Because yes, you have to think about things that income that will stand the test of time. Do you truly feel like when Real Housewives of Potomac is all said and done that GNA is going to pay your bills? Do you think that you collaborating with Do you think you collaborating with somebody who has no fashion sense is ideal and smart? I mean, you ain't no fashionista either. She ain't no diva, but still. You're not making the the smartest decisions. And the first thing that you should have done is thought about ways to survive without this man. Because even though you don't want to be in this situation, you're making yourself still be in this situation because you're not trying to do things independently. So I just think it's funny that she really has so much to say about Candace and her way of living off of her mom and stuff. But sis, you're drowning without this scaly old white man. Anyway, um, Mia feels like, yeah, she needs to go ahead and see it through with the divorce and like i said she claimed that she is going to do it probably later on in the year girl please anyway they are going on a cash trip hosted by raggedy robin to the dominic republic I, i'm <laughs> the dr is very obtainable like come on and i need y'all to stop saying this okay because when y'all make comments about oh my gosh why do we keep getting these low budget trips from potomac you know austin blah 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 and beverly hills they're going this 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 there and there y'all already know the housewife formula let me let me break this down for y'all they have a domestic trip for those who don't know what domestic means they have a a state trip somewhere within the, the u.s they take a u.s trip first and then they do international later at the end of the season so everybody who acts so confused it irritates me because if y'all watch any housewives franchise this is what they do for all of them they take a trip within the state and a trip out the state at the end of the season but like i said the, the dr i can go to the dr like they're not even doing atlanta remember atlanta did um anguilla like y'all not going to places like that there are more exotic caribbean islands that y'all can go to but y'all go to dr oh my gosh like the, 
the budget is just not there. It's not, it's not there. But everybody is included on this trip, of course. And they don't plan on doing any kumbaya. So, child, we're just going to have to see. The meeting that we've all been waiting to see is NECA and Wendy. They finally have a sit down, which is long overdue. NECA wants to clear the air, get to know each other, um, you know, just kind of get some things together that were miscommunicated. So she says that before she even got into the group, Lebe let her know that Wendy told Lebe that there was a, another cast member that was going to join and that Wendy felt some type of way that NECA was using her name as a means to get in the group. Now, if I don't know you, I don't know how it was presented, how NECA went, you know, I, I guess with production to bring up Wendy's name because yeah, y'all met each other once, but if you are going around acting as if you do know me, then that would be an issue. Cause it's like, yeah, I don't know you. We have people in common. We met once, but really I don't know anything about you. So I guess it's just in a way, it depends on the way that NECA um, was explaining her connection to Wendy. That's, that's how I would, you know, feel about it. If you going around acting like, you know, me and you really don't, um, but yeah, she just felt like there was already some animosity going into the group because of what Lebe had told her. Again, you know, Lebe being brought up, it's just like, girl, we were not feeling her. Wendy's issue is the whole shrine situation. Like you already know that's big in our culture. You don't you don't do that, calling my mama a witch and all of that. Like she just can't get over that. NECA is saying that all of this happened after she received the phone calls. Um, from, you know, Lebe and Wendy is like, but girl, like my mom and my sister are denying these claims that you keep making on them. Now, in all reality, if it, it does have a bad stigma in the Nigerian culture to be called a witch and things, do you truly think that your mom would admit that? I'm just, you know, being honest when it comes down to that. They're not going to be honest if that was the case, um, if she was submitting her name to a shrine, but we did see on camera that Wendy's mother did say that she did call Lebe, but it was in the name of trying to, I guess, mend the relationship that Lebe and um, Ivy, Wendy's sister, had. She was just trying to let her know that it's hard to come by good friends. It's easy to make an enemy. So, NECA is saying that, yes, she was told that her mom submitted her name to a shrine and, you know over in Nigeria, the family is praying for her. Like, you know, this is just such a big deal in their culture. So it's impacting me, it's impacting my family. Everyone in Nigeria is praying, like, you know what it means. Do you know for a fact the impact of calling somebody or somebody's family member a witch? What well, my mom submitted my name to a shrine. It, can, okay, she did not. I'm willing to even put that aside for us to move forward. So so if y'all keep saying that this is such a big deal, this is a big deal, this is a big deal, you know how it is in Nigeria, girl, why do you want to be friends with her? I don't get it. If you're making these big claims, why why would you want to move forward with her? Like, that's a genuine question. I would want, I hope that Wendy asks her, girl, why you want to be friends with me so bad if this is what you think of me and my family? Y'all, I'm sick of this. So... She ends up apologizing to Wendy and then they get back into another argument. I don't even know why they start arguing again. I guess because Micah, girl, Micah, see, I'm I'm texting and I'm saying other people's names. Uh sorry girl, wrong, wrong girl. Um <laughs> because NECA wants Wendy to apologize, I guess. And Wendy is like, girl. You actually said these things. You called my mom a witch to my face. You know, you affected my children, but you want me to apologize off of something that was hearsay from a third party, from Lebe. Like, girl, what? And so at that point, Wendy is like, you don't want peace. And she get up and she walks off. Meanwhile, production is talking to 
NECA breaking the fourth wall and NECA's getting emotional because she's like, you know that your family said these things about me. You know your family's bullying me. Girl, if that's the case, then why you want to be around, around Wendy? It makes no sense. Candace and Chris, they're at home and he's telling her how he needs more time with her, but he's not getting that. Remember last year, he was really busy and she was, I'm sorry, this Martha's Vineyard commercial is on right now and I keep trying to see if they're going to drop the dates yet because they just keep playing with us. I don't think they dropped the dates yet. But anyway, because uh, that that's what I'm really here for, okay? that That's what I want to see. That's what I want to be reviewing. Okay, not this, to be honest, but, you know, we just going to just keep being um, optimistic for better, better seasons of Potomac. Um, but anyway... Yeah, he wants her around because last year when he wasn't around, she was complaining. So they, you know, shift roles. He's at home making content and she's on the road doing her D space second leg. And um, yeah, so he's like, well, we need to spend more time. She's in agreement. And he was like, with that, that leaves IVF. They have to get the ball rolling with that. And so she's nervous that, the IVF could be making the lump in her breast bigger. It may have some type of effect. So she grabs the letter that she got from her doctor's office and it showed that there was no signs of breast cancer. It's just a swollen lymph node, but she wants it removed. He's trying to make her see that there's nothing wrong, you know, and that everything will be okay. And But she just wants it removed. So at the end of the day, she's probably going to have to go into surgery. Grace is graduating from high school. You know, a very emotional moment for parents. Um, I feel like for kids, it's just like, okay, we ready to get it over with. Because I know that's how I was at graduation. And my last name starts with an M. So, you know, it took a little minute for my name to get called. We had a dinner afterwards. And you seen Giselle's parents are there. Jamal Bryant was there. Child, they got a billboard of him every time you enter downtown right before you get into downtown from the south side i'll be like oh gosh every time i see him but anyway yeah shout out to uh grace raggedy robin neca and mia they go shopping to prepare for their trip and what just you know threw me all the way off was bravo showing the total spent and it was 68 dollars bitch And what was Robin, what was she trying on? That star-studded jean jacket? Oh, my God. So, Neca tells them about the meetup that they had, that she had with Wendy. And she feels like Wendy was gaslighting her and not trying to, you know, do her part at apologizing. And I did forget in that scene that Neca was trying to get an apology out of Wendy. Um you know, for the smoking crack allegations and all of that. Um, and yeah, I do feel like Wendy could have just gave her apology about that. It wasn't, you know, that big of a deal. So Wendy could have definitely been like, yeah, girl, I'm sorry. I was just, I was just saying that because you was pissing me off talking about my mama. But you got Robin talking about, she doesn't want to make peace with you, girl. Shut up. Shut up, Robin. Anyway, let's move to the next the ladies are at the airport all ready to go. Kiana is, Kiana, Kiana is a part of the trip as well because Robin knows her through Giselle. I think that's what she was saying. So yeah, everybody is there. Karen is on good terms with everybody, even Mia. So they're on their way to the DR. Now, Robin is telling them that they're staying in a villa and uh, that they'll have, you know, staff and everything else, go-karts. I said, okay, so a bit of luxury, but we're going to stay tuned because we ain't seen this house yet. So Karen tells them that Ray goes to the same villa because he takes an annual trip to the DR to play golf. So she lets them know that earlier on in their marriage, he took his trip to DR and she called the villa and a woman picked up the phone and she was freaking out because she was thinking that there's, it's another woman. But according to Ray, she was just a part of the staff. Giselle said that Karen is getting played in her confessional, but a lot of the girls also said Mia is the one to, you know, inform everybody that you can order a woman. You can order, you know, a little prostitute, a little concubine, you know, and they'll be right up. And so Robin 
<laughs> Robin. Well, you know, the people are saying that you shouldn't allow your man to come here by himself and you shouldn't be allowing your man around Georgetown by himself or laundry mats or nail shops either or, or hotels, okay? Hotels that he's supposedly not staying at. Girl, bye. You don't need to be giving nobody advice on where and, and when husbands should be coming and going. Girl, please. Kiana was like, child, don't say that because, you know, my man, he come here all the time too. And Mia's like, you know, I was the girl who used to be a part of the um golf trips. Yeah, and Miami vacations too, because that's where you found Gordon, the married man. Girl, she's so ready to get out of that marriage. It's not even funny. The villa is nice, and Candace is feeling like, um, you know, since Juan likes to help strangers, did, did he help with all of this? Because we need to know. And side note, why is Kiana's confessional look eating all the girls up? Like, y'all letting a friend up eat y'all up with her one confessional appearance. Because the rest of y'all girls look crazy. But yes, Kiana said that she drunk some champagne, her ulcers start messing up, and baby gotta go to the bathroom, okay? Because she simply cannot. I do want to get to know her a little bit more, especially since we got a confessional. Kiana, girl, where you at? Show up. Okay, so this villa, it needs a little bit more decor because that's what's missing for me. I'm looking at it, and it's like, okay, it just looked like standard furniture in here. Y'all ain't got no flowers, no vases, no little knickknacks. Well, I, I like to be in places like that. That's real detail in decor because I don't know. It just makes me feel like, girl, where am I staying? Okay, Karen, with her watch what happens live. Look, that's cute. That is cute. Um, Speaking of, Robin is giving the ladies the rooms. And there's what, like three single beds. And then the rest of them are doubles, if I'm not mistaken. It's eight rooms. So NECA gets a single. Giselle gets a single and um ashley gets a single the rest of the ladies have to double up now the way that she presented it to uh karen was shady i want to give you an experience that you never had before you you got to share a double room <laughs> i say you raggedy <laughs> so karen is feeling some type of way because she doesn't want to be in a double bed but Ashley ends up giving Karen the bed and she was like, I'm just going to sleep in the double with Mia. So she was fine with that. But Karen suddenly wants to be in a different villa. She doesn't even want to be in the same area that they're in because she wants a water view. And Robin is like, girl, this doesn't even make sense. Like you doing the most, you could get a water view if you trade with Ashley. She just gave you your room. So they're not really understanding the reasoning. She's claiming that she's um, claustrophobic. Girl, it's always some weird ass excuse with, with Karen. Like, girl, I don't understand why you act so strangely. And Giselle feels like something is up too. Like, she's trying to hide something. Yeah, because I don't understand. You're getting exactly what you want with Ashley's room, but now all of a sudden, you don't want to be there. But, I mean, you got the coin to do it, girl, so who am I? <laughs> Karen calling Robin raggedy is hilarious, because I call her raggedy, too. But, basically, Karen ain't got no room because the management got scared off because the ladies is doing all that yelling and arguing and stuff. So basically Karen ain't got no room. She's stuck on the couch. Ashley trying to figure out what's wrong. And she was like, you don't want to stay with Mia? No, Karen don't want to stay with Mia. So now Ashley is going back to the original plan of giving Karen her room and Ashley's going to go and stay with Mia. But it shouldn't even took all of that because she offered it to you the first time and she didn't even have to. You better be lucky she ain't one of them type of people to be like, well, shoot, girl, I'm not going back. I gave you the offer already, so you just shit out of luck. Karen, I don't understand why you do the most sometimes, but I was hollering when Robin tried to put her input in and you told her to basically shut her raggedy ass up. <laughs> Giselle goes and checks on Kiana. She lets us know their connection. She's a Be More girl. She used to be a hairstylist, so her and Giselle's hairstylist, Kyle, they know each other, so... That's how she knows who she is. She wants to go and check on her because the plane ride was rough for her. She wasn't feeling well. And Kiana appreciates that because Wendy and Candice can care less. They ain't even go and check on my girl. So, uh, listen, y'all y'all need to do right by her because my camera is being a play header and it died on me. So, yeah, what I was saying was they need to do right by Kiana because 
Right on the street is she was the one who was throwing hands when it came down to uh, Deborah and the rest of them. Giselle gets some of the girls in the room. I think it was Mia and Ashley. And she tells them that she plans to crown NECA as the new grand dame because she doesn't like the way that Karen was coming at NECA and trying to downplay the side of town she stays in when, in fact, she stays in the Potomac zip code and she's actually a homeowner. So they all go to gather around to play golf and they do this quick little ceremony where Giselle crowns NECA the new grand dame she said that since she gave karen that name it's up to her to pass it on if she wants to so they have that ceremony and karen really wasn't phased by it but candace was to the point where she walked off because she just feels like giselle always tries to inflict pain on other people and she doesn't like it so anyway that was the end of the episode it was kind of dry but let's go ahead and get down in the comments and talk be sure to check us out tonight on the whether you like it or not panel hosted by really btv at 8 15 standard time make sure y'all like the video do not forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel and i will see y'all in the next one bye